Hi, this is Pat Johnson, your sociology instructor. In this mini lecture, we're going to look at poverty in the United States. Defining poverty is difficult, but there is a government statistic that is used. It's called the poverty line. The official poverty line in the United States was just over 24,000 in 2015, according to your textbook. In 2018, it's up to $25,100. Don't get caught up too much on that number, but just know that it is a number that indicates the minimum amount that it can be thought to have people live on um, and subside, subside with basic food, basic housing in our country. These poverty lines are made by the United States Census Bureau. These are the numbers for the lower 48 states, not Alaska and Hawaii. They have a little bit higher poverty lines. And often the poverty line is used for eligibility for transfer programs, some type of benefit program by the government. If you look at this map of poverty in the United States, you can see that certain geographic areas in our country have more poverty than others. The red here does not indicate red states as far as liberal or conservative Democrat or Republican. The red here is an indicator of poverty. And we find more poverty in the southern part of our country, border states, um, the rural southwest, areas of California, in um, many of the Native American reservations in our country, whereas there's more wealth in higher populations, especially in the Northeast, in uh, the Chicago area, um, in uh, San Francisco area, Seattle area, uh, Portland area out here in the West. So there are different variations of poverty and uh, wealth in our country geographically. Demographic variables that are correlated to being in poverty, that should be variables, are being a high school dropout, being a minority makes you more likely to be in poverty. If you are divorced, if you're separated, if you're a single parent, um, if you're the children of people who are single parents or separated or divorced, you as a child are more likely to live in poverty. Females are more likely to live in poverty than males, and the elderly are more likely to live in poverty, although not as much as before. Prior to Social Security, prior to Medicare, the health care program for the elderly, um, many more people who were in the elderly population lived in poverty. Medicare was not meant to totally support somebody in their old age, but it certainly brought a lot of the elderly out of poverty and able to um, subsist without a whole lot of savings. One of the things I want you to think about as we go through social stratification and talk about poverty and wealth in a class system is the idea of asking yourself, is social stratification in a society a good thing or a bad thing? This map is not a map of income throughout the world. This is a map of intensity of social stratification. Those areas that are shaded green, especially dark green, have a low level of social stratification. In other words, there's not a whole lot of difference between the very wealthy in, a, in the society and the very poor. Those areas that are pink or uh, orange or dark orange have more um, extreme social stratification. So here, um, in the United States, you can see it being kind of that like salmon y uh, pink color. There is a higher level of social stratification than, say, in, in, Euro in Europe. And some people consider this a good thing, and some people consider this a bad thing. 
Now, why would some European countries, especially uh, the Scandinavian countries in Europe, have less social stratification? They're still high income countries, but they are more socialist with much higher taxes and many more programs that redistribute income throughout the society. In the United States, we live under a system where there's taxes, high taxes for the wealthy, but not real high taxes that you might see in, say, uh, Sweden, where there might be like a 65% income tax or something like that, where there's much greater redistribution of wealth. So I want you to ask yourself, would you rather live in a society where there is extremely high taxation and the income of the society is redistributed to everyone so that there isn't extreme social stratification? Or would you rather live in a society where there is a more moderate level of taxation and what you earn is more likely to be what you keep in a society? I think there's good arguments for both sides of the debate and people can make intelligent uh, arguments for either position.